going back to follicular lymphoma and the change in the DNA that was found in the tumor tissue isolated from different patients with follicular lymphoma. It turns out that in those B cells that make up the tumor tissue, a translocation exists between two of the 23 different types of chromosomes found in the nucleus of every human cell. This translocation is between chromosomes 14 and 18. The lower arms of chromosome 14 and 18 are basically switched. The switch most likely happened during the development or differentiation of a particular B cell, which then gave rise to the cancer. What happens to the genes that are located at the breakpoints on chromosome 14 and chromosome 18? What genes are located there in the first place? On chromosome 14, the translocation is in the locus that encodes an immunoglobulin heavy chain, also referred to as Ig heavy chain. Ig heavy chains are proteins that are part of a protein complex that B cells exhibit on their cell surface. This protein complex is also often referred to as an antibody. Since exhibiting antibodies on their cell surface is one of the major jobs of a B cell, many Ig heavy chains are needed. The Ig heavy chain gene is therefore very highly expressed in B cells. This is accomplished through an enhancer which is located downstream of the Ig heavy chain transcription unit. On chromosome 18, the translocation is in a locus that was subsequently named BCL2, which stands for B cell lymphoma gene 2. In the case of the T1418 translocation, the critical modification to the DNA is the following. The BCL2 locus is split in its 3' untranslated region, or UTR. The resulting BCL2 locus, lacking part of its 3' UTR and everything downstream, is then fused to part of the Ig heavy chain locus, including part of its transcription unit, as well as its downstream cis-acting regulatory elements. These downstream cis-acting regulatory elements include the enhancer that causes high expression of the Ig heavy chain locus in B cells. What's the consequence of this translocation for the BCL2 gene? The consequence is that the BCL2 gene now is under the control of this strong B cell enhancer and therefore highly expressed in B cells. The T1418 translocation basically results in the inappropriate overexpression of the BCL2 gene in B cells. What kind of molecule or protein does the BCL2 locus code for? The human BCL2 locus codes for a protein of 239 amino acids that possesses a hydrophobic tail. This tail can mediate association with lipid bilayers. However, in 1986, when the sequence of the BCL2 protein became available, it showed no homology to any other known protein and its sequence did not suggest any specific function. The BCL2 protein was therefore a novel protein of unknown function. However, the T1418 translocation suggested that this protein plays an important role in the development of follicular lymphomas. It was therefore a protein that was definitely worth to study. The two important questions now to ask were what the BCL2 protein normally does and how it may cause tumor genesis. Wo, Corey and Adams, three investigators at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute of Medical Research in Melbourne, Australia, thought that one approach to answer these questions was to recapitulate in cells grown in culture what happens in cells harboring the T1418 translocation. Using mammalian cells grown in culture, they therefore generated cell lines in which the BCL2 gene could be overexpressed with the help of a viral promoter. They then analyzed cells from these cell lines with and without BCL2 overexpression. 
Before I tell you about the results, I want to give you some background on oncogenes. The definition of an oncogene is a gene which, when overexpressed or hyperactivated, causes tumor genesis. And the proto-oncogene is a gene which has a normal function, but which can turn into an oncogene when it becomes deregulated by, for example, a mutation or rearrangement of its DNA sequence. In the late 1980s, when the BCL2 gene was identified and characterized, a number of oncogenes had already been identified and characterized. For example, the MYC gene. The CMYC gene is a proto-oncogene, which, just like the BCL2 gene, can be affected by specific chromosomal translocations, which lead to its overexpression in certain cells that then cause Burkitt's lymphoma. MYC overexpression causes tumor genesis because the MYC protein promotes cell proliferation. Compared to normal cells, cells that overexpress MYC divide faster and proliferate in an uncontrolled manner. In the late 1980s, that was the mechanism known for oncogenes described at the time, acceleration and promotion of cell proliferation. What about BCL2? What Wo, Corey, and Adams found is a different mechanism. They found that the overexpression of BCL2 does not promote cell proliferation. Instead, they found that it blocks apoptosis. This represented a new mechanism of action for oncogenes. But let me back up a bit. The cell lines that Wo, Corey, and Adam had generated for their experiments are cell lines that need what are called growth factors in the medium in order to proliferate and in order to survive. Growth factors are small proteins that are made and secreted by cells and that are used to mediate communication between cells within a specific tissue. If the cells that Wo, Corey, and Adam used are grown in the presence of growth factors, they divide happily and you only see a few cells at any given time point that undergo apoptosis. However, if the growth factors are removed from the medium in which the cells are cultured, most of the cells will die by apoptosis. Most of the cells will undergo the morphological changes that are typical for apoptosis, such as shrinkage, condensation, and fragmentation. Now what happens if the BCL2 gene is strongly expressed in these cells? Wo, Corey, and Adams found that the overexpression of the BCL2 gene in these cells had no big effect when the cells were grown in the presence of growth factors. They divided and proliferated just like control cells. Cells that overexpress the MYC oncogene, for example, would divide faster in the presence of growth factors and therefore proliferate faster. But this was not the case for BCL2. What they observed instead is that after they removed the growth factors from the medium, most cells survived and did not undergo apoptosis. The cells survived, however, they did not divide and proliferate. The overexpression of BCL2 therefore causes a block in apoptosis. Effects seen by overexpressing a particular gene often reflect the gain of function phenotype of that gene. For this reason, these results suggested that the normal function of the BCL2 gene is to block apoptosis. And this turned out to be the case. Based on their seminal findings, which were published in 1988, Wo, Corey, and Adams had identified the first protein with a role in apoptosis, BCL2. The BCL2 protein can block apoptosis. It therefore has anti-apoptotic activity. And one last note, if BCL2 overexpression blocks apoptosis, but has no effect on cell proliferation, how can it cause tumor genesis? It is now well established that most tumors are not caused by one change to the DNA, but by several changes to the DNA, which most likely occur sequentially. The overexpression of BCL2 in B cells of patients with the T1418 translocation was probably the first of these changes to occur. The fact that this overexpression causes B cells that should die to instead survive, 
allows secondary mutations to occur in these cells. If, for example, a secondary mutation occurs in a gene that normally functions to restrict cell proliferation, and if this mutation inactivates this gene, tumor genesis could be initiated. 